Quentin Tarantino is a master filmmaker that has been gracing audiences with his brand of filmmaking for over two decades. He has covered all types of genre films ranging from heist movies, westerns, kung fu epics, and 1970s inspired car chase movies. He is a consummate student of all kinds of movies, yet he has never attended film school. What makes him tick? Terry Gillen gave you some advice before you made Reservoir Dogs. Mm -hmm. You remember what it was? Yeah, I sure do. I go, look, you know, you have a very specific vision in your movies, and it's right there on the screen. How do you do that? How do you get that vision that's in your head? How do you get it on the screen? And he said, well, Quentin, you have to understand, as a director, your job is to hire talented people who can do that. You hire a cinematographer who can get the kind of quality that you want. You don't have to be able to know how to take the lights and move them around to create an effect. You hire a talented costume designer who can give the colors that you need and the flamboyance or not that you want. Uh, you hire a, a production designer who can do that. Your job is explaining your vision. Your job is articulating to them what you want on the screen. And then all of a sudden, the whole yeah. mystical, shamanistic thing that I thought directing was just went boop. And I realized I could do that. That it wasn't this yeah. Merlin-like magic kit that I needed to know the, the right spell in order to conjure. You oh, I can describe what I want. I know what's in my head. <laughs> That's the yeah. easiest yeah. part. I'm good at describing it. Okay, action! So, there is no secret magic making movie sauce? Wow, what a revelation. You know, when you're making movies, you're kind of getting to this mindset that you have to know how to do everything. You have to know how to write, direct, produce, edit, do sound effects, do visual effects, color correct, and know how to output your movie. But, that's not necessarily true. Focus in on an area and master everything within that area. If a challenge pops up that you cannot handle, then find somebody that can crack that nut. Remember, movie making is a team collaboration. Great job. <laughs> is there a series of movies that you want to make? Yeah, well, I just I, I really like doing film writing, and uh, I haven't published any of it yet. But I really like doing film, film. writing. Or, yeah. or, or, these are essays on film, not yeah. criticism. Yeah, it's like well, it's kind of it's, uh, it's criticism slash essays, usually about right. dead directors, so I don't get in trouble. Um, but I love that type of writing because I love just being this student of cinema all the time and dealing with it and, and constantly putting uh, my aesthetics, what I consider good work versus bad work, uh, constantly under a microscope and then being forced to describe it. We not only see she is a bride, but she's eight months pregnant. Oh, Interior, wedding chapel, day, overhead shot. <laughs> we hear step, step, step till a man we haven't seen yet enters the shot, right next to the fallen bride. He lowers down next to her on his haunches, holding a white handkerchief with the name Bill sewn in the corner, and begins tenderly wiping away the blood from the young bride's face. While still in her close-up, the bride speaks for the first time in the picture. She looks up at the man standing over her and says, Bill, it's your baby. A beat after she says the word baby, we hear a bang! and the bride receives a bullet in the side of her head. Cut to Black Screen, the fourth film by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> it was that writing that led me to this story. Right. And one of the things that was great about it is because I'd been doing so much writing, I wasn't cold when it came time to write this ah. piece. I was lubricated, I was in the zone, I was writing every day. So it was just, you just won't move over to here. Yeah. And that was really exciting. So. What can we take away from Quentin's words here? Well, it's easy. Work on your craft every day. Whether it be screenwriting, studying your favorite director's techniques, studying or practicing lighting techniques, reading up on tips for set design, or practicing different styles of editing. Whatever your art may be, just keep working on it. It will make you stronger. Another thing to note is go out and do something, anything. You'll never get any better at your craft if you don't try. Do it and accept the failures as they'll surely come your way. But as the old saying goes, get up, dust yourself off, and jump back on that horse. You've learned from that experience, and you'll do it better next time. 
I started shooting a, a short film. I actually was uh, by a, a filmmaker that I had met along the way named Fred Olin Ray let me borrow a 16 millimeter camera. And then I said, after shooting that for a little while, I go, wait, let's make a feature. Let's just turn, expand it into a feature. So we, you know, so that started this process of a movie called My Best Friend's Birthday. And, um, and I proceeded to work on that movie for about three years. Basically financing it completely myself from a minimum wage job. So we would shoot, and then I'd, and that would be it, and I'd run out of money, I'd raise a couple more, more hundred dollars, and we'd do it again. And were you happy with it? Well, I started putting it together, and um, kind of realized I didn't have what I thought I had. However, the stuff I did in the first, say, year and a half or two years, well, that was the really student filmy amateur stuff. But the stuff I had done in the last year of shooting, that wasn't bad. It was, it was pretty good. There was a genuine, definite progression. No, you're right. I really could use this. You! Your ass is grass and I'm the lawnmower. And so I looked at it as like, well, okay, look, that was my film school. I didn't know how to make a movie before I did this. And now I did this and now I, I do know how to make a movie. And it was my film school and it was a pretty goddamn cheap film school. And to this day, I actually think that other than the film history aspect, of, of, of film schools that rather than go to film school, just get a camera and try to start making a movie. Now, let's take a look at the scene from Pulp Fiction. Pretty smart, huh? This scene bookends the whole movie. This couple, they decide to rob a restaurant. Right here. Come on. All right. Same as last time, remember? <laughs> Your crowd control. I handle employees. Mm -hmm. um. I love you, pumpkin. I love you, honey bunny. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! Any of you fucking pricks move! I'm gonna execute every one of your motherfuckers! You Why got that? You just be quiet over there! Get your in the fuck out of They are in complete control at the beginning. You're gonna come around and collect your wallets! You don't fucking talk! You just throw them in a the bag! Are we clear? I said, are we fucking clear? But having spent time with Jules and Vincent throughout the whole movie, we know that this silly couple has just stumbled into a hornet's nest of trouble. In the bag. One of the robbers gets greedy and wants the one thing that Jules is willing to guard with his life, and that's the suitcase. In the Jules and Vincent section of the story, this is the object that everyone's desire. As a matter of fact, it's also the object that has been giving Jules and Vincent all of the trouble in their part of the story. But, in this story, the suitcase is a MacGuffin. So what is a MacGuffin? Well, Alfred Hitchcock described it as this. He said, it's the device, the gimmick, if you will, are the papers the spies are after. The only thing that really matters is that in the picture, the plans, the documents, or the secrets must seem of the most vital importance to the characters. But to me, the narrator, they're of no importance whatsoever. What is it? What is it? It's beautiful. So back to Pulp Fiction. The suitcase mesmerizes the robber long enough for Jules to seize the moment and take control of both robbers. One robber starts to blubber and breaks down quickly, the other one just kind of freezes and tries to hold on to his head. We're not gonna do anything stupid, are we? Don't you hurt him! Nobody's gonna hurt anybody. We're all gonna be like three little Fonzies here. And what's Fonzie like? It's cool. What? Cool. Correct the mundo. And that's what we're gonna be. Not to give anything away, but the scene does end happy. Jules and the robbers get a new lease on life. But I can't give you this case. They get to start up the next chapter. And everyone comes away having learned something big. Check out the movie, it's actually great. And this is actually seen Quentin Tarantino, the writer, at his best. So, again, it comes on down to go out, practice your art, make something fun. 
You may fail the first time, but you get up, you try again. You really don't need film school to become a filmmaker. You just have to go out and work on your art. Work on it every day. That is the biggest lesson that could be taken away from this. Ciao!